Hey everybody, we'd like to call the Madison Public Schools Board of Education meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You. It looks like we have a full complement of board members here today. If we include um, Galen, who is participating by Zoom. Hello, everybody. All right. Um, so uh, first, we start with our school community session and our public participation portion. Um, Emily, could you please read the rules for that? Yes. Thank you. Good evening uh, for those of you in person and online. The board welcomes public comment at our meetings. We do ask that when you're speaking, you state your name and address. The comments are limited to three minutes in order to ensure that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak. I'll let you know when your time is running out. The board is happy to hear from our community, but at a meeting like tonight, it should not be expected that there will be a discussion. Um, it's not a time for public for public discussion. So if necessary, the community member will be contacted to follow up. And if you're joining us tonight via Zoom, we ask that you raise your hand and you will be called upon and we can just go back and forth in person and on Zoom. So is there anyone in person who would like to speak? If so, just raise your hand. Um, I'll take you right in the front. Maybe, I'm sorry, maybe for today what we can do, we did this at the main, the school name committee, it worked really well. Yeah. The person speaking could uh, take the podium, right. and state their name and their address, and then people can line up behind and just come up in order. Sounds and perfect. Uh, and so you'll let us know if you have online folks. Thank you. Uh, my name is Carol Montel, 318 Schoolhouse Road, Old State Road, Connecticut. I am currently the involved cooks manager at Milton Jeffrey. I've been with the Madison Public School System for 13 plus years, originally hired at the Daniel Hill High School. In response to the decision about source, the food will not change, but many lives will. Regardless of what is stated, there is no guarantee that we will keep our jobs. We have to go through the interview process. However, the provider does not have to keep us, only uh, go through the hiring process with us. We have served, I have served, we have served the students of Madison for many years, becoming part of their lives, watching them grow, prosper, going on to graduate, and make the contributions to the world. We are the familiar faces of the students that they see every day, dedicated and caring, always putting our students first. We all look forward to going to work every day um, and do the best that we can to provide smiles and um, atmosphere that everyone is comfortable with. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jill Benton. I'm from Killingworth, Connecticut, and uh, I've uh, worked for the Board of Education for 17 years. Um, what I'd like to say is I've appreciated that. I've really liked working for the food service here. Um, 
It's a fantastic public school. Uh, one thing, it's good. Uh, I mean, uh, I know that for a fact. Um, I love the kids. They're very polite. They treat us with respect. They're really neat. And I work in high school. Sorry, didn't tell, didn't tell me that. And um, in fact, they gave us all um, helping hands certificates of recognition. Um, I don't know which year. Last year. Last year. Now, all of us got this. They voted on that and just recognized us. I thought that was very cool. Um, the other thing I, I want to say uh, about my own personal story, and we all have stories about why we're here, what we get out of it, and, and all of that. M mine is that I like working for the Board of Education because I've always been connected to education. It's my primary value, I think, in life. I thought medicine was, but you know what? There can't be doctors without educators. So um, that's just my personal you know, bias. I'm, I'm dedicated to education. I have four um, college degrees, two of which are, um, uh, uh, you know, the high course <laughs> mass, one of them is, but. Um, so it's important to me, and I, I just like you guys to know it. It matters to me, I think, that I am connected to the school. I could be working for a mega million dollar food thing called McDonald's, um, but I choose not to. They would hire me in a minute. It grows up through their ranks, but I'm choosing this school, and I like it. Hopefully, I can stay. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Cynthia Kilbride. I live at 407 Long Hill Road in Guilford. Um, I'm the cook manager at Danahan High School. I've worked with the town of Madison for the past 20 years. I've been in food service for 35 years and I have a degree in nutrition. Before I started working here, I decided I wanted to leave the restaurant industry. It was very demanding, long hours, working weekends and holidays. I had a young son at the time and I wanted to spend more time with him. I needed a job that was more stable and would provide insurance for my family. Everyone told me, get a town job. I have security, a union, excellent benefits. So I decided to be a lunch lady. I had fond memories of the lunch ladies growing up. I thought it was something I would enjoy doing. And I felt I could bring those same positive experiences to the students. I went to every town on the shoreline and Madison by far offered the best benefits. I applied for a job and accepted a two and a half hour position to get my foot in the door. In the beginning, I remember working at Island Avenue Elementary School and the kids would come down for lunch and they would be all excited and jumping around and poking each other and making a lot of noise. And I'd go out into the hall and say, all aboard the lunch train. And they would all stop and be quiet and line up nicely and come quietly into the kitchen and get their lunch. And when I'd hand them their tray, we would both go, woo hoo, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> that's when I fell in love with my job. Uh, and I continue to bring the fun and engaging atmosphere to every school I work at. I applied for every cafeteria position that opened within the system, working at every school in the town until I reached the highest position available. The town has now decided to outsource our jobs. This will have a huge financial impact on many of us. The health insurance alone will be very hard to replace. <clears throat> it's very good. We will be paying more for less coverage, which means more money out of pocket to cover medical costs, Many of us will be losing stipends and longevity payments that we've earned through the years. We'll lose our life insurance policies and further contributions to our pensions. I know people who work for Chartwells locally, so I have an insight as to what to expect, and I'm not sure it's a company I want to work for. Uh, so many of us might have to find jobs elsewhere uh, to get comparable benefits to what we have now. So when the town says that it'll be a smooth transition over to Chartwells, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, when jobs are outsourced, you don't know who will be brought into the schools and how they will interact with your children. And I can assure you that they won't be as caring and involved as our staff is. We have great relationships with our students at the high school. We're there to celebrate their achievements and cheer them up when they're having a bad day. We go to concerts, plays, sporting events to support them in whatever their passions might be. We love hearing their stories, seeing their prom pictures, and dancing in their TikTok videos, which we do every person. <laughs> they have honored us in many ways through the years, but the outpouring of concern and support from our students in the recent days 
have been overwhelming, to say the least. It's a true testament to the positive impact we've had on them. So thank you for listening to our concerns. Good evening. My name is Bernadette Maxted. I have worked for the town of Madison for 19 years. I am a paying tax resident. And by the way, with the recent revaluation of our property, we'll need more money out of our pockets. I went through the Madison school system. In fact, I went to Ryerson Elementary when it was High Hill Elementary, and Mrs. Ryerson was my principal. My husband went through the Madison Public Schools and graduated from Daniel Yen High School. My son went through Madison Public Schools and graduated from Daniel Yen High School in 2017. In 2019, COVID hit. The school was shut down. Lunches were still required to be made available to the students. I came in every day until the last day of school to make bagged breakfast and lunches for the children to hand out under the bridge to those who needed them. It was a scary time. I love my job and I love our kids. We do form relationships with them. We know their names, their orders, what colleges they applied for. They talk to us when they are stressed out about exams and we get excited for them at prom time and graduation. Our kids come first, but we are more than just lunch ladies. We are also humans with families of our own. We need our jobs to help with expenses. <clears throat> I carry the medical insurance for my family. It is out. If we are outsourced, I may not get health insurance through the new company. As everyone knows, health insurance is very important. Without it, it could ruin the finances of that family. We would also be losing our safe food handling stipend, cashiering stipend, and our longevity stipend. It also means we would lose our seniority that we would have. Again, I do love this job, and I... <clears throat> If I didn't work, if I didn't love it, I wouldn't have stuck it out for 19 years. I planned on working for the town of Madison, not an outsourced company, until I couldn't work anymore. Our kids need us, and we need them. My name is Kai Galawa. I'm a Madison resident, and I also work for Madison Public Schools. And I'm not a public speaker, so <laughs> let me see if I can get through this now. Not and say it, say it clearly. Um, last week, when we were advised that our group was going to be laid off at the end of the 2023-24 school year, it was mentioned that it was a business decision. If so, are Madison residents able to review or see the bills, bids you received? and savings that were offered by outsourcing our group and our workers. <clears throat> it was also mentioned that food services did not make a profit. Actually, that hurt. Are the teachers there to make a profit? Are the admins or maintenance there to make a profit? No. Like us, they're there to serve the students and support the school. Thank you. Hi, I'm Susanna Bacola, um, partly drive Madison, Connecticut. Been a resident for 22 years, raised all three of my kids here. I still have my 15-year-old son at the high school. I've been employed with the Food Services Group since 2019. October of this year, I was promoted to cook manager at the Fulton Middle School. To pay. I love my job is an understatement. I go in every morning a half hour early and I stay an hour later every day of the week since I've been working at Pulse in the last three years. I'm a single mom now, three. So I not only work for the schools, I go to another full-time job when I leave Pulse. I have three other jobs that I work over the weekend. So I work seven days straight to meet my mortgage payment alone. The town says that they are negotiating with Charlotte, but they don't tell us if we're gonna maintain our pay, the benefits and otherwise. If we are not, if Chartwell takes over, 
and we don't assume the same rates of pay and benefits. I'll have no choice but to leave at the end of the year, which isn't what I want to do. I love the kids. A lot of kids in town knows, know me because of my kids. I really would love to maintain this job because I don't have any more hours in my day to find another job. <clears throat> and Joe Baracco can tell you that because he works. We are so understaffed at Polson. There's me and Joe Baracco. We're supposed to have five people. The town could never, the last three years, the town cannot find people to work at Folsom. So it's me and him. And to say this hasn't affected my children and my family life, I see my son for a few minutes in the morning as we drive into school together. I get him up at some god awful hour to ride with me because I can't trust him that he'll wake up and get himself on the bus. And he sits in my car in the parking lot of Polson for an hour until it's his time to walk over to camp. I then see him again at 10 o'clock at night while I'm making dinner. I see him for five minutes because I'm exhausted. I make dinner. I go to sleep because I get up at 2.30 to do it again the next day. Things have been so bad, especially at Polson. Two Fridays ago, I left work. Me and Joe were just so stressed out. I called my middle college student, knowing that she was going to come home on the 19th, and told her, and that didn't ask her per se, I knew she wanted a part-time job when she came home. And I knew how desperate I was for a person to help us out. So I called her up and I said, you want some money for Christmas and for next semester? You're gonna come work for us. What was her response? Absolutely, mom, I've got your back. So last week, real quickly, HR got a hold of, she applied, HR got a hold of her, said, can you come in tomorrow at two? Without a doubt, she said, absolutely. She goes to school in Rhode Island, was at school at 11 o'clock at an exam and made it here for two o'clock to be interviewed and do the paperwork with HR and then to go across the park parking lot and get interested and get fingerprinted. That's the dedication that we all have. We've always all had. Every single one of us are dedicated to our positions. And we would like the town during their negotiations to negotiate for us because we deserve it. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Ed Kaczynski. I am the national rep for NAGE who represented these ladies in the last contract negotiations from two and a half years ago. I'd like to give you a brief history on how and why we're here this evening. When NAGE negotiated this contract with the Board of Ed two and a half years ago, I, first of all, let me apologize if I have a cold so I'm fighting a little laryngitis, so I'm a little scratchy, I apologize for that. When we sat and negotiated this contract, we came to an impasse. And the impasse that we came to was a result of a subcontract. We went through the mediation process, and when we sat and discussed this, it was brought to the union's attention that the cafeteria staff and the positions that they were in, they were losing money. As part of an agreement in this contract, we agreed for subcontracting. And part of that, when we sat there at the table on our side, the ladies that I represent provided information that the food service was currently under a federal some type of federal mandate where the food that they were serving was not attractive to the students therefore there was low sales 
resulting in losses. The ladies assured me that that mandate was going to disappear and that as time progressed, they would be able to turn things around in the cafeteria to where they would either break even or result in a profit. Obviously at that time, nobody knew that, you know, what is anticipated with COVID. Last year, the, amount of, um, the profit and loss for these ladies was $23,000. So we're standing here fighting and arguing over these ladies who have you all heard this evening, their dedication over $23,000. I have reached out to the administrators of the Board of Ed and to have these discussions. And one, there were several things that were commented to us that this has been on the Board of Ed's eye and in their eye, you know, hindsight for the last two and a half years. I asked recently who the contractor was going to be because these ladies should at least have the ability to know if they are going to have any benefits, what their rates of pay are going to be. And I was told that there are no contract has been reached yet. As of four, even as of four o'clock yesterday afternoon, when I've heard Chartwell's, there's no contract that's been reached. We were told that there would be a job fair in March. But once again, once again, these ladies should be provided the information. They've been told that they're going to be guaranteed a job. But without a contract right now or who you're going to be serviced by, these ladies don't really know if they're going to have a job. Chartwell, if it is Chartwell, they come in, they could hire them on a Tuesday, turn around and lay them all off on Wednesday. The other thing that was brought up in one of our meetings was the fact that they would be able to receive unemployment. Currently, these ladies are 10 month employees, which means they do not receive unemployment in the summer months. If this third party vendor comes in, are these ladies gonna be contracted for 12 months? Are they gonna be contracted for 12 or 10 months? So there is a big discrepancy on what's being said and what's being transported and given to these ladies. So therefore we are requesting that you allow these ladies to stay negotiate a new contract with NAGE and let them keep their jobs and not go to subcontract. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't really speak, but I just want to say that my interactions with these women every single day are something that I look forward to. I think that as a young adult, it's disheartening to see the situation. And I think that it's important to go and negotiate based on what's best for the students and these women and not just based on training conditions. So do we have anyone online who would like to speak? If you're online and you want to speak, just raise your hand. Yeah. Is there anyone else in person who would like to speak? <laughs> Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, next, we have the Board of Education Student Representatives Report, Eli and Brooke. Yeah, so I'll start by saying there's been overwhelming support for our lunch ladies in the past couple of days. And although it's possible that not all the students are 100% clear on what's going on, I think the overall sentiment from the students is that we truly do love our lunch ladies. And we'd really appreciate, if at all possible, for them to stay at Daniel Hand. On a more positive note, the football team won their 14th state championship <laughs> this weekend. <Yeah. laughs> um, marking the end of the fall season, which means the winter sports season starting. And I know I'm very excited for the boys basketball team playing Guilford next Monday, among, among other events. And upcoming for seniors on December 31st, FAFSA applications are coming out. So you can submit those and possibly get some money towards college. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'd also like to say that everyone that I know who, who knows that I'm on like the Board of Education as a student representative has asked me to just put the lunch ladies best um, to help them as much as I can. So I just would like to say that everyone is in agreement that we all love everyone here in this room. So if we could do whatever we can to help them, I think the whole school would just appreciate that. Uh, again, on a happier note, uh, the holiday season is coming up. So there's gonna be a lot of festivities within the school. Uh, Spirit Week is next week and we're gonna have themes like Whiteout, Hat Day, Twin Day, PJ Day, and USA Day. The Jazz Band and Chamber um, Orchestra is having a holiday concert on the 20th. And next week, that Friday is a half day as we lead into winter break. And then looking ahead after break, uh, we are having the 2024-2025 school year course selections mid-January. That's it. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, guys. Feel free to go do your homework. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is the superintendent's report, Dr. Cook. Yes, three important items, but just brief updates on uh, at all because we're uh, not ready to to share too much more than, than than that at the point. As the board knows, we received word that the reading waiver was not approved by the state of Connecticut. Um, the time frame for us to comply with the legislation was moved to July 1, 2025, though. So we are um, planning to alter the budget accordingly um, on that. I shared previously, we were looking to have to put $600,000 into uh, um, the budget for a reading program, and we believe we can reduce that significantly. Um, we are planning on having a presentation with the board as soon as we know all of our options. I've spoken with uh, Tom Mooney uh, just today. He was able to... Um, Get back to me on uh, um, several options. Um, I do want to take time to thank our literacy coaches, central office staff, and Gail Bellinghead for their work on this waiver. They put in um, an unbelievable amount of time. I think it was the uh, lengthiest. I know it was the lengthiest in the state. I think it was the most comprehensive in the state. And I still just can't believe that it was uh, um, denied. So, um, like, like I said, we'll uh, um, continue to compile information and look forward to presenting that to the board along with the options that we have as a district. Um, budget, we continue to work on budget. We have a meeting tomorrow with uh, uh, the Administrative Council to review that. We um, will be presenting the budget to the Board of Ed on January 9th, and you would receive copies of the of the budget book at the end of next week. Um, choice program, I just want to keep the board updated. Um, when that was approved to move forward last year, it was past the legislative time. So we we're now at the point where we're submitting um, a legislative proposal to Senator Cohen and Rep Representative Parker to allow the district to not only be a sending district in the state for choice, but also a receiving district under the ACES program. We're in the learn area, so it's re it's a requirement that we have that provision put into um, mm -hmm. law. The learn area does not participate in choice. Um, and so we believe this would be a formality as Guilford Public Schools was approved of this uh, uh, language uh, last year. So um, we're um, moving forward with that. There would not be um, the anticipated time to accept students into uh, uh, Madison Public Schools would be September of 2025. So we would not be looking for next year, be the year after. Um, but we have to get this uh, legislative approval to, to do so and move forward. That is the uh, end of my report. Um, any board member comments? Board member comments? Um, I would just uh, congratulate not only the um, the football team for its championship, but also going back the uh, women's um, field hockey team. Both won their state championships, and I'm sure there are other teams that did very well um in fall sports as well but um i don't have the list right in front of me but those are the two that come to mind um, immediately thanks to all our coaches and all our students and um thanks to our athletic director um who has done a really nice job um this year really trying to inspire and enforce uh sportsmanship um on the field and off the field and I think as a board, we can be very proud of that and the advancements that have been made. Um, that's it for me. Any other board member comments? 
Okay. Um, audience response to information presented would be the same rules as the public uh, participation. Anyone online? No? Okay. Item seven, the consent agenda. Uh, there's some line item transfers, some budget expenditures, and um, the November personnel report. Um, if, uh, if it's okay, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. All right, Steve, and can I get a second? Second. No, it's one of them. All right, Diane, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, do I have any discussion on the motion to approve the consent agenda? Seeing none, all in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, aye. That. Any abstentions? Motion carries nine nothing. Thank you. <clears throat> now, item nine is our board committee and liaison updates. And we'll start with the curriculum and student development committee. Steve. Um, our committee has not met since the last time we presented our <laughs> next meeting. Is all the 19. Okay. Any questions? No, thank you. Uh, facilities committee, Emily. Yes, the facilities committee met this evening. Uh, we started with an update from Bill about the new facilities director, Peter Anderson, will be starting January 2nd and will thankfully overlap with Bill until Bill's retirement, um, which is set for July 1st. So a nice long overlap to bring Peter up to speed on the many, many projects happening with the schools and the town. Um, we have Alicia Stainon as the construction manager, and they we will be posting for an assistant facilities director position sometime in the spring, and that position would start after July 1st so that Peter um, can be involved in the hiring of that person. So really feel good about the overlap between Bill and Peter. So stay tuned for that. Bill gave some updates on projects at Brown School and Polson. He shared that the construction is close to being complete in at Brown in the East Wing and the kindergarten and first grade wing. He believes it should be done with the majority of the construction by the end of this calendar year. Um, and then we'll be able to give some space back to Brown so they can be using it. He the big windows and skylights bringing in some nice natural light into those um, classrooms. So we might have the opportunity to tour that space for the new year. Stay tuned on that. He also let us know that uh, next Friday the 22nd, they're receiving bids for summer 2024 work at Brown. So that's all the mill work in the classrooms, uh, conditioning out the media center, doing some work in the corridors, the gym entrance, cafeteria windows, and he hopes to have a recommendation of that group um, for the Board of Selectmen in early January. Looking ahead to the summer of 2025 at Brown School, Bill's still working to meet with the principal and architect around sorting out the priorities, the details around the work and the funding for that. Um, some of the items include, of course, the playground for the younger students, as well as some work possibly in the band room or the cafeteria. Um, Polson project updates chugging along. Uh, Silver Petroselli was hired to do the design work for the bathroom renovation, stores and hardware. It's original bathrooms from the 1960s, so they're going to be coming in over the winter break to review the bathrooms and come up with a plan. You mentioned, of course, as you all know, the generator work. This is outside the referendum. They're optimistic that we'll be able to get a million dollar federal grant as well as hopefully $500,000 in state funding, but we'll still need an additional million dollars for this project. And Bill has emphasized before, and he did again tonight, that this is really the most complicated project we have going on due to the nature of the generator work that is happening in a school where students are present. So he's spending a lot of time on that as well. Um, DHHS high school rooftop units are struggling um, as no surprise to anyone. We've had issues with that before, but that we're going to keep the gym as warm as possible in the winter, but they're doing everything they can. And then finally, we talked about paper towels in the high school. As you know, this has um, come from students that they want to have paper towels back in the bathrooms. There were before, and then students advocated for the removal of paper towels. We had hand dryers during COVID. Um, so we discussed the benefits and challenges, having paper towels, not having paper towels. Students 
have made their voices heard that they prefer paper towels for a lot of reasons that I think we can all agree about. Um, they're more hygienic, they're less noisy, sometimes hand dryers don't work, they take a while, kids are wiping their hands on their clothes and how you clean up spills and all that. So we did talk about that. Um, and moving back to paper towels in the high school bathrooms, ensuring that they continue to be recycled paper towels and adding some funding to Bill's supply line item costs for expanding that in high schools. Um, and we appreciate the student voices as well as part of that discussion. We had no public comment and then we adjourned one hour later. End of report. Thank you, any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Report, thank you, Emily. Uh, Finance Committee, Galen. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, we have not met since our last meeting. And in fact, our next meeting on uh, December 19th has been canceled. So we are awaiting the budget book thereafter and a report. Thank you. Personnel committee, Maureen. And the personnel committee also has not met since we last met. Thank you. Policy yeah. committee, Diane. Um, we have not met since the last um, board of meeting, but we have um, some policies up tonight for both first reads and second reads, so I can review them quickly, and if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to ask. So we have policies for restriction, first reading tonight, and that's policy 9540.11, the new media service at meetings, policy 9900 school board legislative program. 9910 so legislative program, 5120.9.4 bicycle and rollerblade use, and 5120.4.2.3 substance abuse counseling. Um, and just a side note that any of the policies that begin in the 9000 series are um, in our bylaws and require a two thirds vote to pass. So that's um, in your packet, along with notes from Shipman and Goodwin regarding the first read. We have policies um, up for rescission of second read and action items tonight, and that would be policy. 5100.9.1 student recruitment, policy 97404 community relations. Then we have first read for policies that are up for review. They are for uh, rescind and replace. We have policy 9510 time, place, and notice of meetings, which would then replace policies 9510 regular board meetings, 9520 special board meetings, and 9540.1 notification of board meetings. Then we have policy 5090.8.1 search and seizure, 5090.3.1 student dress and 5144.4 physical activity, undirected play, and student discipline. Policies up tonight for a second read and action items on the agenda. These are for rescind and replace. Policy 5110.4 student discipline, 5040 admission to the public schools at or before age five, and that is a new policy. Um, policy 9540.2 construction and posting of agenda which again, I'll remind you that's a 9,000 series, so it requires a two thirds vote. Policy 5180.1, confidentiality and access to educational records, which would replace policy 5180.1, records confidentiality, 5180.1.1, directory information, 5180.1.2, relations with non-custodial parents, 5125.1, health medical records. And then the final um, policy that is up for action tonight, for repeal and replace is 9450 committees, which would replace 9450 board committees, 9450.1 committee of the whole, and 9460 advisory committees. And you will find um, notes from Shipman and Goodwin. If anyone has any questions, we can go over them now or we can do them um, as action items. And the report. Does anybody have any questions now or uh, want to just hold them until we? The Get to the action items for discussion. Okay. So, oh, on Emily's report for facilities. Okay. Are we transferring money over to uh, Bill's account for paper towels? So we'll do an answer to that. Not yeah. for this year. We expect to do a, uh, a budget increase uh, request for next year, but we don't um, anticipate the need to do it for this year because we'll be putting it in half, halfway through the year. Feel we we should be able to um, make that work within the, the light of the right now. And at any rate, the discussion during the facilities meeting was it's a very nominal amount. I thought it was like fourteen thousand. 
uh, may end up being less than that because it's only for one school and yeah, right. So and, and we'd be looked at for a full year. So that would be the cost we we're looking at. Doing so that we're going to put year. seven thousand towards that, approximately. Yeah, that's the so next nice budget. So every year, um, at the end of the year, we usually have money that we return to the town, mm -hmm. and so some of that could possibly cover the overage for this year, or there might be like one item transfers at the end of the year. To cover for this, they won't go in now, they will go in. No, they would go in for uh, um, January, January. Yeah. Yeah. for half a year. Any other questions? Okay, and then um, Wendy is on Marianne. I know that you attended a meeting, yes, I attended on November, November 9th. And just briefly, um, because I have another one this Thursday, yeah. so I'll just tell you that the biggest uh, presentations that they do are the superintendents and this one was from uh, Westbrook. Christina Martineau, she presented a great PowerPoint, showed all of their support materials and discussed her district's move towards evolving the landscape in which her educators work there. So um, basically, if anyone's interested in ever seeing any of these PowerPoint presentations, I can have them and they do, show different ways that the different districts do things and some of them are very innovative so, so this thursday i don't know who our presenter will be but it'll be nice right this <laughs> thank you yeah no worries. Okay. all right um moving on to action item number 10 um uh, which is uh to discuss and take action on outsourcing the full food services operation as per the provisions of Article 16, Section 9 of the NAGE Bargaining Agreement, effective at the end of the 2023-2024 school year. Um, I need a motion. I need a motion to discuss and take action so on outsourcing. So moved it. Emily. Second. Thank you, and seconded by Diane. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Like, I, 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 okay. I um, so the gentleman that came up mentioned that there was a $23,000 differential. Is that, that, I'm assuming that was a loss. That was the um, operating loss, but as, as clarified with the gentleman previously, there is benefit costs, and then there also is the annual contribution that the um, employer puts into the um, food service fund, knowing you know, at the start of the year, which is $75,000, and then the approximate benefit cost of $200,000. But yet, our savings on the contract only said one hundred and eighty-five. dollars Right, because we expect that other costs will, will go up. We have the, um, and that was, that was created two and a half years ago, too. Um, but we expect other costs to, to go up. And then we would have to absorb the cost of employment from whoever on July 1st, correct? So as also, yeah. also yeah. clarified um, previously was that um, if there, if there would be unemployment at the end of this school year, then we would pay for it. Right. So we would pay for the unemployment until um, the start of next school year. And then with a the new contractor, they would pick up the, the wages. And then there would be, they would be paying unemployment for that holiday week and then the end of the school year next year going forward. So there is ability to, to file for unemployment for um, full weeks of, of not work when you work for someone other than a school district. Yeah, I think that's important as well because that really means that, as I understand it, um, the food service workers actually will pick up a benefit and that they'll be able to collect unemployment over the summer months and the winter holiday break um, where they- That's barring if they don't take a job on July 1st. If Correct. They can't collect unemployment. And they collect work. it over the summer because they yeah. can work 10 right. years, uh, 10 months a year. Even if they come back and- Yes, yes. If, if you work for someone other than the, the Board of Education. 
Yeah, the way the way unemployment works, as I understand it, is um, not all, it's not only there for unemployment for someone who loses a job. It's also there for employees who are seasonal. And so in the off season, you're able to collect unemployment if, but there's an exception to that, a carve out for educate for, um, for employees of boards of education. So like teachers can't collect unemployment over the summer, nor can nurses, nor can um, cafeteria and food service workers. But if they're employed by a subcontractor that's not employed directly by the Board of Ed, then they can collect unemployment over the summer and uh, the week of the holidays. In actuality, they can continue to collect unemployment if they do take a new job in September and their wages are not equivalent to what they were taking home. For the differential. Correct. So that would still be a hit on the Board of Ed as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, any other questions on this or comments, discussions? I mean, I go ahead. I, I just want to comment I, that I really appreciate everyone who's here today in the comments. Um, I have children in the schools, and my children know everyone in the building, and, and what you talk about the familiar faces, the strong connections, the love that you have for your work and the kids is extremely evident. And I want you to know how much I appreciate that and that we all do. So I do want to say that, that I appreciate you and thank you. I absolutely agree. And in addition to that, um, I think take one look at me and you know that I was a double lunch kid. Um, <laughs> and um, I knew every um, food service worker, every lunch lady's name. Um, at, in my schools as I grew up, that I was friendly with them, I had a great rapport with them, um, and you know I have a great respect for what you do, and um, great thanks for how well you do it. Um, I have confidence in you know believing that most of you will, if if this motion passes, um, will exercise your right of first refusal to interview for a position with whatever food service company the board of ed ends up going with in the next contract. Um, and I, I also have great confidence that, um, you know, as you expressed your, your love for our students and for your work, um, you would continue to provide the same, the same wonderful service for our students and, and for our district, um, even if you were employed in a subcontracting situation. Um, we're in a situation where our health insurance and we're self-insured for health insurance. Our health insurance alone um, went up about 10% last year and is expected to go up, I think, at least 9.6% this year. Um, the, the last NAGE contract was negotiated when I was not on the board of ed, um, I guess Mr. Kaczynski was there um, for the negotiation, as he stated um, during public participation. Um, it, you know, I I certainly understand that the the fact that this cliff is getting closer makes it a more emotional event for for people. But at the same time, um, I I don't think it's I don't think it could fairly be stated that there was no warning that this is a surprise um, or, you know, that this isn't um, a sensible business decision on behalf of the Board of Education. Um, so, you know, while, you know, I, I, I plan to vote in favor of outsourcing, um, I do so um, uh, with um, gratitude, humility, and the hope that um, this will will allow both the Board of Ed to be focused more on its primary mission of educating students and not running a, a food service business, um, and at the same time that our awesome, respected, and loved food service workers will take those jobs with the next 
um, contract and and stay around um, and continue to serve our students as as you have for for years. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Any other comments? Um, so I guess I'm just a little um, confused as to what can be talked about and what can't be talked about based on like you know previous um you know two and a half years ago was a, a contract um uh agreement was worked out and that's always done in private you know between the personnel committee and the union and then the the contract was reached and, and, and you know ratified two and a half years ago and then you know since then we have like some documents that we received in executive session so i'm not really sure like what we can comment out in the open but i I think I would like um, maybe Dr. Cook to speak to like just the history, um, you know, of our of our our dealings with the cafeteria workers with regard to our agreement and how we have done things in the past where we had Chartwells and the separate union and 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 I guess how that compares to other districts around us if it differs from the norm, um, and you know there was some comment made about what had happened many years ago when we were still participating in the government um, you know, lunch program, which we haven't been in for many, many years. Um, and, and that it's not about the money that you make from the food programs, because, you know, historically speaking, it is not, we don't make money on it. We haven't made money on it. And it, it's not about that. It's about providing lunches for the children. Um, and we've never made money on it. Um, and then it's especially under the government program. And then many years ago when we got out of the federal program and, and went with Chartwells and, and changed the food so the kids would actually eat it and not throw most of it away and change the portion sizes and made it, you know, tasty. Um, you know, we did see more students buying, but it, even then, you know, it was not a money-making thing. And we know that. Um, but it, I just thought maybe, you know, just to get a little background in history for maybe other people that are viewing or who don't really know. I know there's been a lot of misinformation going around right. um, about what is happening and what did happen, et cetera. And if maybe just some facts to clarify. No, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for asking the, the question. I think, as you pointed out, the national restrictions, Madison left that um, national food uh, school food service program many years ago. That was not two and a half years ago when they were negotiating the contract. That was not hanging over the, the heads of the uh, um, the workers. I think the biggest thing that I would I would say is that our current model is not sustainable. And I say that not from a, just a financial aspect, but also from an operational aspect. I mean, it was talked about what's going on at Polson this year. We have three open positions that we have been unable to fill this year. They are open right now. And that is very difficult. Um, and it's it's difficult on our staff, it's difficult on our students. We have our manager working, you know, um, that is not what we want to have happen. Um, so that is probably the biggest piece. Our hope is that an outside provider can provide more continuous, potentially 12 month um, employment or um, advancement opportunities and be able to fill the, um, fill the positions. We do not see that there's a potential for the, um, hourly rate to, to decrease significantly. You know, again, that is outside of our control because we can't say, we can't um, tell you what provider that would be right now. This is the first step that has to happen in that process. But if we can't fill the positions right now at the amount of money that we're offering, it's very unlikely that an outside provider could come in and offer less money and, and be able to fill the positions. We look at this as, as, as hopefully something very similar to the relationship we have with Durham services for our transportation. We have wonderful relationships with our school bus drivers. They return each and every September. Um, we have very good um, continuity. We have worked with Durham to raise their, their pay when we were concerned coming out of COVID that we weren't gonna be able to staff the, uh, the bus runs. And so we would view that as, as something similar. It was mentioned that you could be hired on a Tuesday and, and, and let go on a Wednesday. It's absolutely ridiculous, that's irresponsible. There's no way we could operate the, the um, food service program if that would happen. We wouldn't let that happen. We have a contract with, a, with an outside um, vendor who's going to want to continue that contract. And so they're going to want to have a good relationship with us. We've had the management services contract out for a number of years. This has been thought about in negotiations. It's been discussed in negotiations prior to two and a half years ago. 
and um, you know this was the this was the time it was put into the contract at at mediation, but it was voted on by the membership. We put into a, um, the contract a, a severance you know package that um, would help and assist that um, transition. And I think if 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 everything was was able to be sustainable, we wouldn't be in this position. You know, if we were close to breaking even and we were able to fill all the positions and um, things were working well, we wouldn't be in this position. But we we have worked at this for a, a number of years and we we are able to um, sustain it at that at that at that level. And so that's why that was um, put into negotiations and, and held on through negotiations um you know to the uh, to the mediation point and it was uh you know agreed to at the, at the parties at that time and then it was agreed to by the by the association the union when they they voted on it since that time we've had half of our um staff half of half of the staff at that time is or more than half has turned over um you know and that's 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 not that's not um unheard of in 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 this this realm you know we you you shared lots of years of service and that's incredible um, you know, it's great service to the Madison Public Schools and the students, but um, we're also not seeing that coming coming in the door. Like I said, we're not able to fill the positions, and so that's really our um, that's a major concern for us going forward. So, I believe I answered most of your questions. If I didn't, I know we have Art and Heather here um, that could give more more detail as well. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Uh, uh, so, uh, well, I agree with that. I, I feel like at some time you have to look at dedication and you have to look at community and you have to look at the work that these women have done. And I'm not up here to be a cheerleader. I'm just trying to just be fair at what I'm reading and what I'm seeing. And sometimes it's not about the bottom line. It's not. It's about lives and livelihood and this economy. People, people are that I know that are well educated with multiple degrees are not working. The the economy is not good. I, I feel for them. I, I would vote no to outsource. Kaylin, I want to give you an opportunity because I can't see your hand. <clears throat> Thanks, Seth. Um, it's been a good discussion, and um, I have no comments to add. I, mean, I, I agree with what you said too, Christine. But I mean, on the other hand, you know, we're, it's our job. I know. Table, I understand that. So but, but I also yeah. I understand that. But with all due respect, we do give money back to the town at the end of the day, right? We do. We did. So. I don't see why we can't refocus or or at least retain the 21 that we have and slowly phase out with a new company. Whoever takes the July one. I, I'm not I'm not a lawyer, I'm an accountant. So I look at the numbers, but you know, a twenty-three thousand dollar loss is not a big loss. I can't justify the one eighty-five um number, but you you can People call a vote. Um, I would like to say that you know we've worked with Chartwells for a long time. Art has worked with them, and they've they've always been very responsive. Um, and that we're you know we have a contract with them, and they are um, giving the right of first refusal. And I certainly um, would like to see everyone you know apply with them if we do go that route because the kids do like you and they do want you and, and like to see your faces and you like to see their faces and we do appreciate it and they appreciate it. Um, but at the end of the day, we also have to look at, um, you know, what is best for um, the town and the finances because we do, we are beholden to the taxpayers and, um, and the um, the amount of money when it comes to to HR, et cetera, it's not it's not about the money that comes in from the food. That's not what's the issue, because we know we don't make money off of that, and that's not what it's about. Um, and this has been a long time coming. Um, 
I know, you know, it was negotiated two and a half years ago in the contract with NAGE. Um, and it's just that it's now is the six month, you know, coming up deadline um, to, to say if we're outsourcing. And so I think that we should just probably take a vote. All right, unless there's any other discussion, um, I'll call the vote. Any other discussion going once, going twice? Okay. Um, all in favor of taking action on outsourcing the full food services operation as per the provisions of Article 16, Section 9 of the NAGE Bargaining Agreement, effective at the end of the 23-24 school year, say aye, aye. 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 Um, all opposed, nay, and any abstentions? So, six, uh, seven, one, and thank you. Keep two of your pockets. All right, next action item um, motion to rescind the following policies. Policy 5100.9.1, student recruitment, 9740, board community relations. So moved. It's moved by Diane. Do I have I'll a second that. Seconded by Galen. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Discussion? Just a reminder that 9,000 series needs a two thirds vote. Yes, we need a two thirds vote on the 9,000, the 9740 board community relations one. Just in case we're split, we might have to split the motion. Yeah, yeah. Got it. All right. All in favor of rescinding those policies, aye. 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 Opposed, aye. Nay. Any abstentions? So that's uh, nine nothing. It carries. Thank you. Uh, action item 11, a motion to, I need a motion to approve the following policies. 5110.4, student discipline. 5040 admission to the public schools at or before age five, which is new and per uh, statute. 9450.2, construction and posting of agenda. 5180.1, confidentiality and access to educational records. And 9450 committees. Motion? So moved. By Diane. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Emily. Thank you. Um, all in favor of approving? Oh, any discussion? Just a reminder the 9,000 students needs a two thirds. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All in favor, aye. 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 It's nay. Any abstentions? Okay, passes 9 nothing. Thank you. Action item 13 a motion to approve a donation to the Daniel Hand High School fencing team in the amount of $1,750 from the Daniel Hand High School Fencing Boosters to supply needed uniforms. So moved. So moved by Diane. Second. Seconded by Emily. Thank you. Nope, yes, Kathy. Oh, by Kathy, sorry. Yeah. Kathy, thank you. And yeah. Um, someone from my right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> any discussion? I just want to say thank you to the Fencing Boosters and just to comment that the fencing team has 64 fencers this year. That's wow. Awesome. One coach, <laughs> 64 vessels. Wow. So wow. they wouldn't need to buy new uniforms if they weren't slicing their clothes on it. No. Yeah, it's interesting, though. It's all those <laughs> so, you can never predict what sizes you need. Yeah. So there's like bins and bins of things, but and they're also left versus right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it can be uh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you to the fencing mm -hmm. ministers. Um, all in favor, aye. 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 Any abstentions? Motion carries nine nothing. Action item 14, motion to approve the minutes of the November 28th, 2023 Board of Ed meeting. So moved. By Diane, can we get a second? Second. Second. Mary Ann, thank you. Um, any recommended edits? I didn't... No? Uh, discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, aye. Any abstentions? Motion carries nine, nothing. Um, does anybody have any future agenda items? You know, it's not a future agenda yeah. item. Paper towel. Paper towel, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, meetings and dates of importance are noted in your uh, packets. And I need them to entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so can we just say, so yes. I'm a little confused. Usually we need 
like curriculum and finance the same Tuesday that the board was there. The reason why it's on an off. For next, so next week. Yeah. yeah, there was some conflicts with uh, um, agendas. It was a meeting where it was a uh, schedule meetings where we didn't have a board meeting scheduled for after we only have one board meeting in uh, December. So we just, um, and, we, and that's a finance meeting where typically there's not a lot discussed. Well, curriculum. Yeah. So okay. we did move this. And the policy meeting was also moved from a Tuesday to a Monday and it's only zip. So everything is all oh, crazy in December. Yeah. Your digital calendars are accurate. That sheet is actually updated now because it still has finance on it. So just go by what's yeah, on your I got, uh, calendar. It's just curriculum. Yeah. So you have a policy on Monday, curriculum on Tuesday, and then you get to go on your holiday vacation. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Good question. All right, so I have a motion pending from Steve to adjourn. Any second? Second. Second from Diane. Um, to adjourn at 8.34 oh. p.m. Um, any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Seeing none. Motion carries 9 0. Thank you and happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, Galen. Thank you. Bye-bye.